Peace and peace. How are you doing today? My name is Paul Desay, and welcome to Find the Intersection. Uh, today is Wednesday, uh, May the 1st. We are in Eastertide. So during Eastertide, the season between Easter Sunday and Pentecost, we look at the book of Acts on Wednesdays instead of an Old Testament passage. So the goal for this week is to look at all four passages. Uh, they're listed in the um, description of the video and then find the intersection theme thread uh, that runs through all four passages on Friday. So that's the goal. And then apply it to our lives and ask ourselves the question, what's our next step? All right. So as we take a look at Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 6 uh, and also 7 to 20, uh, it, this is a passage that's typically labeled as Paul's conversion. Um, but I'd like to, to kind of look at it from a different angle today. Um, so the context is Saul, who is a Pharisee, very influential Pharisee, who in chapter 8 of Acts is, gives the okay for the stoning of uh, Stephen. Uh, and then chapter 9, which is where our text picks up, is the Damascus Road experience, right, where he encounters Jesus. So let's take a look at a few things. Uh, number one, uh, this is described as his conversion experience. So uh, he encounters Jesus. Uh, in a bright light on the road to uh, Damascus. And Paul, uh, Saul is changed. Now the traditional understanding is Saul's name was changed to Paul because he became a d different person. He was no longer Jewish. He became a Christian. Um, I'm not really certain that's exactly what happened. Uh, I read a great uh, biography of the Apostle Paul by N.T. Wright last year. And he describes, uh, you know, Paul was... Um, Jewish through and through, even after his conversion experience, he was not anti-Jew. He just had uh, an awakening and understanding uh, that allowed him to see the fulfillment of his faith that he had. So while, yes, it's a conversion experience, he became a Christ follower in that moment. He didn't give up his Jewish faith. His Jewish faith was very much intertwined to who he was as a person. Uh, the, the name Paul wasn't given, uh, he didn't go start going by the name Paul until Acts 13, which, uh, which it would have been his Roman name, uh, because he was a Roman Jew, which is kind of complex in that day, uh, when his focus became uh, to the Romans uh, in Rome, his, his, his focus became, so he started using the name Paul. So it wasn't like Abram, where Abram was given the name Abraham by God. It's a different story. So yes, Paul was converted, but not necessarily in the way that we sometimes understand it, in the sense where he gave up his Jewish faith to become a Christian. He just saw the fulfillment of his Jewish faith. And I think that's a great reminder for all of us, is that we are grafted into the tree of the Jewish people. So our roots are tied into the Jewish faith, and it's not separate. There's not uh, you know, this Old Testament faith and the New Testament faith. It's one story in which Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament uh, prophecy of Messiah and Savior. So anyway, no babbling about that. The second thing I see is the calling of Paul in this passage. Um, we see that uh, the after effects or the response in the explanation of what happened uh, when Ananias explained uh, to Paul what had happened, he explained that uh, Paul was appointed. And so there's this idea that Paul was called from that bright light Damascus Road experience to be the apostle to the Gentiles. And uh, so deeply rooted in his conversion experience is his calling to, uh, to, to, to reach out to a group of a people group that wasn't included. And his mission was to include those people. And he received that mission, that calling from Jesus on the Damascus Road. So I think for me, I, I, when I read a passage like this and look at Paul's calling, I have to evaluate my calling and to see if my calling is clear. If, if, is it muddy and, and I need to explore my calling uh, with Jesus in, in a way that he provides some clarity and direction to my life. And I encourage you to do the same. The third thing is in the center point, really, of this whole passage is Jesus. So if you look at conversion, um, uh, calling, uh, the, the third point today would be Christ. Uh, and Christ is the center of this passage. It's not Paul. It's not Saul. It's Christ. Christ is the one who initiates the action, and he comes to Paul. This is provenient grace that God has been working in Paul's life all the way through his life, and yet here he, God comes to Paul on this road and this journey. 
so we want to see that God is the one of action. And Paul, everything that happens to Paul is a response to that grace of God which working in his life. Um, and so we see uh, in this idea of Christ is um, uh, Christ was on mission in his resurrection to recruit, to call Paul to further the mission. And that's what all of our callings are. Christ comes to us because Christ is on mission to renew all things, to redeem all that is lost. And so he recruits us just like he recruits Paul and gives us mission and calling for us to follow and respond. Paul's response or Saul's response on the road to Emmaus was to fall to his knees. And I think that, you know, when we really truly appreciate our calling, you know, our response will be something similar. Uh, who, who am I that God would use me? Uh, in part of this ongoing redemption of all things. And I know that's crazy, but I'd like you to kind of consider these three things in your journey, your conversion, your calling, and Christ's initiation or Christ's initiative in that process of those, um, because Christ is calling us today. Then that's the application is to really kind of step into the shoes of Paul or Saul and allow us to evaluate our conversion, our calling, and our relationship in the mission of Christ. That's all I got for today. Tomorrow, which is uh, Thursday, is Psalm Thursday. That's uh, May 2nd. And Friday, we'll come back and talk about the intersections between all the passages. Uh, if you could do me a favor, in the notes here, the comments, could you share your thoughts uh, based on this passage from Acts chapter 9? Just jot down a few words. Again, the key to this whole thing is learning from one another. And, and I want to learn from you. Um, you know, it, as, a, as a teacher, it's sometimes hard. You're, you're always teaching. But the beauty of the intersection Bible study method is I have the opportunity to learn from you. So will you teach me and will you share with me what stood out to you? Because the Holy Spirit is going to work through you. And I hope that the Holy Spirit will work through me to help you. So let's disciple one another. Can we do that? All right. So, hey, I hope you have a great day today. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Grace and peace, everybody. Bye.